encourage you to pay attention to my predictions. Uh, you might likely come out to see uh, the results uh, uh, looking so similar because as which is co-owned by the IDP, the British Council, and their Cambridge assessment. So we'll definitely come with basic trends and based on experiences and how the trends have been passing out. You can kind of in a way predict what likely now be possible to emanate in a subsequent test. For today, I'll be predicting on the essays, uh, tax two to be precise. So if you're ready and you're good to go, why not come with me? So let's get straight uh, into my area of uh, assessment and let's see how um, that will look like. So I'll quickly take you back to uh, the basic task that you're expected to, to see. I encourage you that if you've not paid attention to the basic uh, key areas of uh, the essay, I would encourage you to do that now. Remember, the examiners will be paying attention to how well you respond to the tax, uh, what are the most important things that you need to pay attention to if you are actually uh, making up for the test, or probably preparing um, strongly to get a wonderful score bond. So they want to see how much you understand the question and how well you responded to the question. That will be under the tax response and achievements. They also want to see your coherence and cohesion, how well you've integrated your ideas, uh, logically connected your paragraphs. They want to see all these very important also. And the key areas that a lot of students lose points uh, from, uh, basically the grammar range and accuracy, and also the lexical resource. Uh, I guess uh, if you're following up with my series of lectures on the essay, you would learn a lot about um, these key areas of assessment when it comes to the essay. So basically, let's get back to what are the key things that you likely should expect when it comes to the essay. So I'll start off with uh, basically the types of tasks that you expected to um, know when it comes to the essay tax too. Basically, you are to know that the first tax you are to think of when it comes to the essay would be to write an agree or disagree essay. So this particular essay type requires that you pay attention to two basic ideas or probably fold of um, points that examiners want you to connect with them. So if a question could be given to you and you're asked, um, do you agree or disagree, please take note you can't agree and disagree at the same time. A lot of students make this mistake. So what they do is they make up the introduction, immediately then they go straight to the second paragraph. They agree to the question there, and they go to the paragraph three and they disagree there and they struggle with the conclusion. That is more like a putting the cup before the horse. You kind of, in a way, messed up the whole scenario to how to answer the agree or disagree uh, question. Okay. So from the agree or disagree, you should also have at the back of your mind that there is also what we call the agree and disagree and analyzing to what extent you agree or disagree. So should you have a question like that, we would encourage you to pan on both sides. So this is where you likely would want to agree to agree to extent and disagree at the same time. And uh, in your conclusion, you try much as possible to uh, cover up your ideas by giving a wonderful uh, conclusion there to give you the examiner kind of a, a simple take on what your position is to which you agree or disagree. So in essence, where, what, what you need to know is once you have agree or disagree, stick to one variable. Either you agree or you disagree. So when you have a situation where a question comes in and asks you to what extent do you agree or disagree, then you can plan on both sides. You can either agree a little bit and disagree to a greater extent there and conclude with the general idea. So moving on away from that there, we'll look at um, the other key task areas you need to pay attention to in order to help you come out great with a wonderful score bank. The second task uh, you might be getting on the eyes is what we call the advantage and disadvantage uh, essay. So in this type of essay, actually what you expect it to do is to look at the variable. If you watch my videos, you will get to know what the variables of a question looks like. From the variables, you can get your prompt and your task. If you've not uh, seen any of the videos on the essay, I encourage you to go to IELTS, Godzilla Principles. Then you get all the videos on essay writing. I give, I give a, um, a couple of uh, 
as a samples that's going to help you uh, come out great with your uh, essays there. So back to the second task you are likely to come across, which is the advantages and disadvantages. Now, I always encourage students, don't make your advantages and disadvantages together. I've come across a couple of essays where you have um, students will give one advantage and look for another disadvantage, add it to that advantage and make up the second paragraph. Then in the third paragraph, we'll make up their second advantage, then the second disadvantage together. Uh, when you alternate this way, you find out that your disadvantages are actually countering your advantages. Rather, it should be the basic idea on the question, not just using the advantage against the disadvantages. So I'll encourage you, you do what we call the block method. The block method is where you give all your advantages in one paragraph, then you give all your disadvantages in another uh, paragraph. That way, coherence will be a little bit cooked when you are uh, uh, reading or when the rater is making the, the assessments there. So once you have the advantages, disadvantages, you have to give a minimum two. I always advise stick to two advantages. Don't do more than that. Remember your time, the time is very limited. So you need to maximize uh, the time given to you as much as you can. So it better you stick to just two advantages, don't overwrite, rather develop your ideas to meet up with your word count. And the next um, essay type you like to be looking at will be the reason and their solution. It's very similar to the advantages and disadvantages. So if you're writing the a reason solution essay, it simply implies you're giving two reasons why a particular situation occurs or happens, then you're actually obliged to give two specific solutions to uh, these uh, incidents. Remember, the solution, so you should look carefully that the solutions are not solutions to the reasons, but solutions to the central idea of the front. Let's take for instance here, we have a question that uh, asks you that, that the incidents of tobacco consumption by young people is on the rise today. What are the possible reasons and solutions to this situation? Now, if you look at it carefully here, I may give reasons as peer pressure or the pressure it could be possible reasons why younger people consume tobacco. Now, if I give solutions, the solution shouldn't be to the reasons, but rather to how the incidence of tobacco consumption by younger people can be eliminated or reduced. So you need to be very careful when you're giving your solutions. It shouldn't be to the reasons, but rather to the central idea of the prompt. So this is the third um, tax you expected to come across on the test and tax two. Remember we started off with the agree or disagree or to what extent do you agree or disagree? Secondly, we talked about the advantages and disadvantages. And thirdly, we just took, finished referring to the reasons and solutions of uh, uh, tax there. Next, we'll be looking at the discuss both sides and give your opinion. This is not most of a popular question task when it comes to tax steel of the aisles that what you expect to do here is you expect to kind of weigh both sides uh, to a particular prompt, as in pay attention to the variables there and give your opinion last year there. I always get these questions are always popping up here. Should I give my opinion in the introductory paragraph or should I delay it a bit? to the conclusion. Now, there are no laws, just based conventions to resume or writing up of the opinion. The opinion can be at the introduction, can also have the opinion at the conclusion. There is no law, there is no rule of time that says you must always have your opinion at the introductory part or at the concluding part. It has to do with a choice where you feel very comfortable having your uh, opinion as stated. Personally, I always advise my students to put the opinion at the introductory part there. There you already have a, uh, give the rater a picture of where you're coming from and uh, developing your ideas afterwards that would be very easy because we already know the portal at which you are uh, driving home from. So it's easier, uh, not really a convention anyways, but it's kind of make the essay have more like a face and it gives a wonderful coloration while you're building up your body uh, contents there. Get your opinion there. For instance, uh, uh, some students will prefer to live on campus during university education. Others will want to live off campus in private apartments. Uh, where would you prefer to live uh, if you're studying in a, at a university? Now I have two variables here. One, living on campus, 
to living in private apartments and examiners on my opinion. So I can easily weigh my options by saying a variety of preferences to come towards living in a private apartment, others may prefer to live in school dormitories. Uh, personally, I'm of the opinion, whichever way you want to place it, personally, or you say you're of the opinion that uh, living in a private apartment seems to be better because of privacy and probably concentration at school work. So these gives it, uh, the examiner some firm, uh, firm uh, coherence as you write, because you already uh, created a break of ideas that they would want to work with as you develop your body uh, paragraph there. Now, there's nothing totally wrong if you should have your ideas uh, slated at the end uh, of the paragraph, or probably concluding paragraph there. And to the next question type, that will be answer a direct question or answer direct questions okay so the answer direct question you have to pay attention to how the questions are being developed and follow the trend on the numbering of the question there for instance if i have a question that asks me um, a lot of people uh, have a change in trend of fashion okay uh, what could be possible reasons for this change in trend uh, then I could have another question coming up. What would fashion look like in the future? So if I have these questions, I remember I have two questions there. Let me take that again. Uh, today, there is a possible change in trend as regards fashion. Now that's the simple prompt. Then my question comes in, what are the causes uh, to this trend? Then the second question says, what would fashion look like in the near future? So if I have this question inside, what I'll quickly do is I'll use my introduction to build up my idea towards what the question is all about. I give a general opinion of what I've understood from the question. Okay, in my own words, remember, you still have to paraphrase that in totality. Then you move into the second paragraph where you discuss the first question. Remember, you have two questions there. So the first paragraph, uh, body content paragraph, I mean, that's a paragraph two, will respond to the first question, okay? Uh, which is, uh, what are the changes? So your two points there will be developed in paragraph two. Moving on to the third paragraph, the question asks you, how will the future look like in respect to fashion, okay? So here you have two points also develop here. So you probably may give two reasons why you think uh, fashion might change in the near future based on the precedent you have today. Then you develop the points in the third paragraph there. Then afterwards you have a conclusion. If, for instance, you have just a question, not two questions there. So you have at the back of your mind that uh, the two questions, the, sorry, the two points you're given there Towards that singular question will now be spread out in the in paragraph you have as paragraph two and paragraph three. But when you have two questions, you take each paragraph to develop each of the questions there. I would encourage you to pause this video and replace it and get all that in uh, carefully there. Talking about my prediction um, questions, okay? Um, now, for those writing in Nigeria, the trend I was being so far discussed both sides and answer direct questions. Okay, I still believe uh, IDP and um, the British Council in Nigeria will want to flow with the trend. Uh, we're still discussing both sides and answer uh, direct questions. So if you're writing, uh, and if I'm still expectant of this question type, remember once you're writing this essay question type, there are formats you must follow with or format or trend you must uh, flow with in order to help you come out great there so i'll uh, still make some practices i uh, go back to my youtube channel watch videos on discuss both sites answer direct questions on ilts gunzler principles this will help you prepare better remember preparation is key when it comes to essay writing you can't get any better if you are not a making essays on a daily basis so my advice would be write at least one essay a day and make sure you have an expert tutor looking at it and making corrections and recommendations so you get better at your writing so my prediction acts two will be a discuss both sides kind of essay you'll be coming up with in the tax two and basically answer direct questions so follow my lead Look at the trend that I've been working with and make sure you come out great with it. Wish you success and don't, don't forget 
the more you practice with the essay, the better you get at it there. Make sure somebody looks at the essay. You can't be the judge, the jury, and the executioner all in one fold. When you write, somebody should look over your briefing and make sure the person is an expert tutor so the person can recommend uh, basic grammar principles that you've missed out or probably your vocabularies that you've not really created well. And that will get you on a better play platform in order to write better and wonderful essays. See you.